Next, now there are many uses for a handheld mic like this guy here. One that comes to mind is for, for when you're recording perhaps interviews in a really loud environment. Check out the difference between the built-in mics and a handheld cardioid mic like this one. So this is from the built-in mics right on the top. You can hear there's a lot of background noise and this has a hard time picking up my voice. Now we have a cardioid mic built in right in the bottom here. It's going to reject a lot of the sound, pick up my voice a whole lot better. Big difference, huh? A mic like this one has a very tight pickup pattern, so it rejects most sound from behind the mic and is only really sensitive to when you're really on top of it right there. Classic cardioid mics include the uh, ubiquitous uh, Shure SM58. This one is actually made by Zoom sister company, uh, Samson. It's the Q7 model. It's a little bit more affordable. Now, if you want to do some really high quality narration, then you might want to invest in a nice, a condenser mic like this one here. This type uses an XLR cable, which, which is balanced to avoid some hums and buzz that might come through some other cheaper uh, mic cables. Now, being a condenser mic, it needs power to operate, and you would normally have to uh, maybe connect this into a mixer uh, to power it up with phantom power, but you know what? The H4n has that functionality built right in. We'll go to menu, input, and down here till we find phantom power. Okay, and we'll select that. We have two settings here, 48 volt and 28 volt. Most professional mics use 48 volt. So with Monomix on and phantom power, you can record really high quality narrations with a mic like this. Just remember to turn phantom power off when you're not using it to conserve your battery power. Now, by the way, We've been talking about mics being placed into the inputs in the bottom here, but you can just as easily place a drum machine, a synth or electric guitar as into these inputs as well in the bottom. You could also use these inputs to take the left rights from an external mixer. That way you could record a whole bunch of mics, just get a, get a mixing console, connect all your mics to it, then take the outs of the mixer into the line ends here. It's a great way to record a band. So no matter how you record, either using the built-in mics, a single input set to mono mix, or a pair of inputs with mono mix off, you'll end up with a stereo recording in whatever format that you set. Now, like I said before, WAV files are the best way to go unless you maybe need to record them into MP3 files. If you're recording WAV files, which is just for WAV files here, you can press the record button as you record to place in markers on the fly.